Hi. Hello. Uh, please introduce yourself. Yeah, so hello, my name is Falk Mai. I'm working at EMD Electronics in Darmstadt in Germany, where we are developing OLED materials. Uh, so OLED is pretty awesome, right? And I interviewed the, the inventor of the OLED walking around. Ah. This conference is amazing. There's just OLED all over the place. Yeah, that's and right. Yeah. You supply materials in a lot of OLED in the world? That's right, exactly, yeah. So you can see a picture of an OLED over here. So, uh, yeah, typically the whole stack, of course, consists of many layers, but the one that we are most interested in is the OLED Active stack that you can see here in the display. And it consists of green, red and blue pixels. And um, actually, you can see some of the pixels in that black box here. Um, there's a red, green and a blue pixel, which contain also MAC materials. Uh, so, so what goes into making these materials? Is it uh, stuff you've learned over the years? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So our approach is actually um, to yeah, use our knowledge from the past, but also we try to develop new materials using, for example, computer simulations. Um, that's also my expertise and my background. Uh, we try to understand the materials before we synthesize them. We try to model them on the computer and get the best uh, out of the materials. So um, if, you, if you can come to me. Yeah, sure. Uh, some of the interesting OLEDs I've been filming here for example, are printed. That's right. Yes. Are you supplying for them? Yes, we can. Is also it different or similar? Or? Yeah. So the material properties for a printed OLED or an evaporated OLED are actually quite different. And um, yeah, the reason for that is that um, the film morphology is very different from solution process as compared to evaporated. So also the materials need to yeah have different properties, whether you want to solution process them or whether you want to evaporate them. That's right. Yeah. And when you run your computer software, does it have AI? <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good question. Yeah, we're also looking into machine learning and, and AI stuff. But um, so for OLED, it's actually not so easy because you need a lot of data to make AI really powerful. And in, yeah, OLED is a quite new research field compared to other display technologies. So um, there is uh, what's called uh, uh, all these layers here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it looks like a lot of layers. That's right. All yeah. over the place. Yeah. Every layer. Yeah, you can have a look here. Maybe it's better to see over here. So this is how uh, one of the OLED pixels that you saw in the black box actually is composed of, of many layers. Um, so for example, the holes are injected here from the whole injection layer. They are transported. They can be blocked. Here's the emissive layer with the emitters. So red, green and blue pixels are in the emissive layer. And then we have a hole blocking layer, electron transporting layer and electron injection layer. And uh, actually, so MAC materials are in all of those layers. And uh, yeah, depending on what kind of function you want for the material, also the chemical structure is very different. How about the, they're talking about masks and getting rid of masks and yeah, so some that's, are using, that's, that's, that's how people are using. Yeah, Where's so, the mask? So in, in our process, we don't need this fine metal masks. That's the question for the panel maker in the end. So we just supply the materials. So actually, the, the mask is not uh, something that we really get into contact with. So it doesn't matter if they use mask or they don't use mask, they'll use your materials anyway. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And um, when I go around here, and we film with companies over there, yeah. uh, there's amazing flexible OLEDs. Yeah, all right. What do you need to think about to make a flexible OLED? Okay. Is it just the same stuff as before? Yeah. Just with I mean, a different cover, the plastic instead of glass? And there's actually also glass, so you can also do it with glass. It just has to be very thin. So, and also the OLED layers have to be very thin, but that's, that's not a problem. So we can make layers as thin as five nanometers, so really thin OLEDs are possible. Why is there burning sometimes? Yeah. Is it to, to do with problem with the purity in the material or nothing to do with that? No, it's not the purity. So, I mean, there are degradation processes going on and also on the conference there have been some talks about uh, these degradation issues. Um, that could be, for example, due to exciton, polaron interactions or stuff like that. So that's something that we also take into consideration and uh, we can improve the material side as well. Yeah. Um, so, organic is like alive. Does that mean this stuff is living? No, no. <laughs> no it's what just is the organic. Yeah, it means there's a lot of carbon in there. So uh, there's maybe carbon, hydrogen, a little bit of oxygen, nitrogen. Yeah. Um, so bit. these, yeah, these are the, like this. yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So these are the most important elements. Um, yeah, and th that's why it's called organic. It's not living. <laughs> it's not alive. No. But it's th th this carbon stuff. Yeah. Can degrade. 
potentially. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that just means that, for example, of a molecule, a phenyl ring is breaking off, for example, and but the phenyl ring will then still stay in the OLED, so it's not coming out of the OLED. And uh, so when you, you run those computer softwares and uh, look for materials and everything, you basically have a database of all known materials, That's and you right, kind of yeah. like combine them this way, that way, make new materials, and That's suddenly right, you exactly. find something. Or yeah, so it's a kind of interplay between the computer simulation, but also the chemists in our labs. They have their own ideas and they think about new molecules. And then before they go to the lab to synthesize them, we can look at the properties of these materials on the computer and decide whether it's worth to go for the synthesis because some of the materials we are creating, they take several synthesis steps and this is very time consuming and also very expensive to, to synthesize them. Is it pretty awesome when you find a solution, you try it out and it just works? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there, there are these, 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 uh, these moments where uh, in the computer simulation you try to predict something and then this material really is synthesized and it's tested in a real device and it performs the way that you predicted. It's really nice. But there's also kind of drawbacks where you predict something and actually it turns out to be wrong. So then you have to modify your, uh, yeah, your, your models. Yeah. And when we talk LCD, you also all of the LCDs, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. So you, uh, also, right? what what do we see here in the wall? Uh, yeah, I see the backlight, polarizer, yeah. TFT. So this is the layer crystals. where the LCDs are in. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I see all these layers, you are in all of them. <laughs> no, 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 no. Some of them. Yeah, some of them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so, so here, there's something also. What is that? Yeah. yeah, so this is some of the OLED materials. So these are actually polymers. So um, nowadays in most displays, there's actually no polymers in because most of the materials are just evap evaporated. So that means that they have small molecules inside. And here, polymer is a very long chain of organic material. But these were one of the first uh, yeah, um, yellow uh, appearing materials that were synthesized as polymers. And they can be solution processed. And here at the Display Week, do you have conversations with customers, partners, exactly, yeah. uh, startups, innovators? Exactly, yeah. And what kind of conversations do you have? Like very technical? They ask yeah. you a bunch of stuff? Yeah, so we have technical discussions with our customers, like for example the panel vendors. But we also have discussions here with academic partners from universities, for example, or from small startups. Yeah, and that's uh, actually the, the day is very full with meetings and discussions. So, yeah, very interesting. So. It's cool to work in a company where you know you're in a crucial part, crucial part of uh, the world, the technology world, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this place yeah. is so important, but I mean, at Merck you're also doing a whole bunch of other stuff, right? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, there's very different stuff at Merck, for example, healthcare. I mean, developing, uh, for example, uh, some, some pharmaceuticals is, is very different, but also very exciting. But of course, I don't have much, of, much contact now with the people developing, uh, I don't know, uh, some stuff. medical stuff about cancer, yeah. curing cancer, so so it's very different. But uh, it's of course exciting to be in such a uh, such a company. Thanks very much to ZXS to be one of my sponsors here at the Display Week 2023. ZXS is based in Shenzhen, and I will be doing a video very soon with them, featuring their transparent displays, OLED. LCD light box ads machine. So thanks a lot. I did video with them nearly 10 years ago when they were doing tablets and now they do these cool devices. Thanks a lot for watching. Check them out.